Hello my soccer universe and welcome to my first review since I had my disease and we'll talk of course about what was happening in the Champions League. Boy, boy, I mean there's literally only one game we have to talk about because all the other three, well, uh, times having interesting stuff were much to talk about but there's everything to talk about the final game and uh, what can I say? I opened yesterday the Idris's uh, box, took out the Real Madrid shirt, and I can already wear it. So here it is, the new Real Madrid shirt. I also see that, <laughs> that my Salzburg shirt back there is a little bit uh, under the sun, so you might not see it all there that well. Yes, um, that's the sucky part on my half is that the weather is now at least in the afternoon getting a whole lot nicer, but one cannot go outside. So go figure but we can do a little review video i mean from the get-go we knew that uh this week's champions league action uh is probably only about one game and one game only and it turned out to be, be that way although uh one tie got a lot closer uh, than one would expect and one tie other tie got a whole lot more goals than one would expect and uh the last one got uh, exactly the opposite uh way less goals none than expected. I would say I'll walk you through the <laughs> through the games, give you my thoughts, and yeah, we gotta uh, talk a whole lot about that Parisian bottle job in Madrid. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I think this smile that you have is kind of this is a smile of disbelief. I think this very well captures what I what I felt through quite a few games there. And we'll start in Munich, where uh, Salzburg completely got obliterated. And uh, yes, I was actually proud the way Salzburg played against Bayern in the first match. Uh, you know, they are by far not my favorite team, but I have to, have to say the way they gave Bayern their all after Bayern had just lost to Bochum, it seemed to be a nice way. And I also felt it was while it was not undeserved, it was maybe a little bit unlucky to not win that game. But I do remember, and I even thought, and I probably should have put it on camera, I even thought about it um, before that particular game and then also in the aftermath of that game. I, I remember when uh, Basel for the first time made it out of the Champions League group stage, also played against Bayern, beat Bayern at home 1-0 and then got completely mauled in the return like 7-0 and I thought, it is just made for Bayern to do something similar. Well, something completely similar. Something completely similar. The first two, three minutes, Bayern has a big chance. Salzburg has a huge chance. Uh, I, th I think um, uh, it was actually a good defensive block uh, there as well. But uh, it was, was it Süle on Capaldo and then the corner. So you actually thought, oh, there is a chance. And then Lewandowski completely freezes out. Maxi Weber, who twice makes a penalty foul on him in the 12th and the 21st, and the Lewandowski, of course, twice converts and 2 0. And after 21 minutes, the whole game was settled. Uh, it didn't help, of course, that in the 23rd minute, Le Lewandowski makes it a hat trick. And at that point, I knew this is going to be a rough night for Salzburg. And I have no pity for them. Because this is what they do to other teams as 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 well. So at that point, I not that I was rooting for it, but in me I kind of thought, huh, maybe it's the time that they really get battered at one point. And yes, it was unfair. I mean, you saw it on the lineups. You see the faces in Salzburg, all more or less teenagers, uh, and and then Andy Ulmer, who, despite born in Linz, I mean, his uh, fa fa family is squarely associated with the other team from Linz. So uh, there's nothing really uh, that I can uh, claim with him <laughs> to have some sympathy. So despite that, um, when I look at the Bayern lineup, those were all superstars. I mean, this it, it was already very uh, disjoint in many, many ways. And it also didn't help that, that Salzburg, of course, had this huge Corona cluster just a week prior. And yeah, it's what's going to happen. Gnabry makes it 4-0. And then um, uh, second half, it did not take long uh, until Thomas Müller 5. Uh, then uh, admittedly a nice goal by uh, Kiergaard. 
makes it 5-1 and you think, yeah, maybe they know. Muller and Sané, it's 7-1, uh, typical Bayern. The other game was more entertaining. Um, and I don't know, it was, I don't think that Liverpool really were in that much danger. Uh, they hit the woodwork thrice, uh, but Inter kept in that they were not the lamp brought to slaughter. Because remember, the first leg, Inter gave, gave it their all, but Liverpool were just at that each better. And when they turned it on, they turned it on and scored the goals. And uh, similar here, Inter really gave it their all. They, they, they were not here. No, we are not down. We are not down and out. And I think they were fighting valiantly. However, Liverpool was largely the better team again. And um, it was just that the uh, goal for Inter more or less came out of the blue. Beautiful shot by Lautaro Martinez. And then I actually lost a little bit in, in, in the interest in the entire evening because I, I was actually programming along. And then I said, okay, that goal, now I'm interested. Put the laptop aside, watched. And in the next action, Alexis Sanchez gets a second yellow. And at that point, there was no way for Inter to come back. I think they may have at most have one more sh uh, show out or goal. So uh, kind of also a little bit deflating. I mean, you punished yourself. I I think the way Inter went out, it is definitely head held up high. However, there is not much, uh, but you were not on the same level playing field as Liverpool. And Liverpool, to be honest, didn't play all that great to begin with. So yeah. But Liverpool move on. Inter do not disgrace us ever. And Liverpool actually lose a game. Although, you know, that twice hitting the woodwork from Salah. I think the game that it was a loss for Liverpool, it will not hurt them because it's an aggregate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, statistically, it's a loss. Uh, it might be the one loss that they can afford in many ways. So that was Tuesday's actions. Uh, Wednesday, you will be surprised to hear I have not seen a single second of seeding and sporting, not even highlights. That game did not interest me from the get-go. I was totally surprised it was a nil-nil. I see that was a goal disallowed for City. I would assume that City should have probably won it, but that sporting hung in there. Bravo, nil-nil. What can I say? This was the least interesting Champions League game uh, of the entire season. And for that reason, nil-nil, City move on. That's that. The other one, though, Real Madrid against PSG. Uh, I mean, that was anyway already the marquee matchup. And it went in so many ways how one would expect it, especially how PSG was expected. Yes, Real Madrid came out and it was from the get-go a much more even game than uh, it has been um, in Paris. Real Madrid had, for the first 15 minutes, Pulled a little bit PSG on the back foot, however, PSG could weather the storm. And I thought it at one time, I think it was Messi who uh, got the ball off cross, I think, and then played it to Neymar, played it to Mbappé, who then kind of uh, did not have a great finish. But I thought, oh, this is Messi, is really working hard. And I have to say, Messi looked really good for the most time of the game. Uh, as did Mbappé, who was here and there and everywhere and was a constant uh, danger and scored actually three goals. Problem is, two were offside. And the one, I think, was uh, the, the Danilo, where he actually scored. Uh, it was just in the build of the offside. Yeah, this must have uh, hurt a little bit because with a little bit better timing, it would have been... Uh, this this would have been a well-deserved lead at that, at that point. They got a little bit uh, later again. Another brilliant pass by Neymar, probably the best thing he did all evening. Second half, it starts similarly, and PSG score a brilliant goal. I mean, the step over uh, of, of Mbappé to make it an in the end in the net, it was all there. PSG had that game in the bag. Real Madrid looked old. Real Madrid looked sluggish. Real Madrid didn't know what they could, could do. Yes, there were a few good chances by Benzema in there. I think especially one long-range shot that a sail shot just by the goal. But other than that, there was really not much there. And then, uh, I don't want to say this is what changed it, but as uh, soon as Kroos came off and Kamavinga came off, also Rodrigo for Asensio, there was a, sort of a little bit more dynamic in the Real Madrid midfield. And then, in addition, uh, they Benzema didn't give up. He challenges Donnarumma. Uh, and forces him into a, a stupid uh, mistake. 
And I can see why uh, PSG fans might call that this should have been a foul. I actually, my first instinct was also that this was more of a foul. But on the other side, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? A player that, and then look, uh, I just rewatched that. I go, look how they're all reacting to. There is Vinicius is trying to get the ball from this uh, Butch side pass. And it's pretty clear immediately that Benzema, he just got on the rumor. He's running in the, in the middle of the goal, but the nearest defender is going to the goal. And the other, uh, it's complete chaos. They don't, 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 don't know what to do. Okay, you give up a goal. It is 1-1. One, one. PSG lost their heads. Benzema immediately thereafter could have scored it, already made it 2-1. Uh, then for five minutes... They try to keep the ball, maybe try to take out the momentum of the game. The problem is, I think it was the Modric who got the ball um, of Neymar. And Modric with the ball is faster than Neymar. And this is the moment where PSG had completely lost control of the game. And Modric created that second goal. The, not only he uh, got the ball... He carried, carried, carried forward, but the way he then dribbled past and assists Benzema is a brilliant goal. It's an absolutely brilliant goal. And still, it should not have been a goal if Hakimi steps out with the rest of his defenders line. This is a disorganization in PSG that can't derive someone mad. And then PSG finds no way back and a few minutes later, Benzema just pops up very class. The way he smells it and the way he goes in, the way he goes with the outside of fit. He knows this is the only way I can score and he scores and the game is turned completely on his head. Within 15 minutes, a game that Real Madrid was not in it anymore. That PSG has dominated left and right, that Mbappé had, has been going running riot on them, that Messi looked brilliant he played passes he could calm he dictated the pace of the game everything looked great 100 percent and then boom the Benzema goal goal goes in i give psg five more minutes where they kept the ball in their own uh, uh within themselves but then uh they messed up this corner between uh, ne neymar and messi and from that moment on they were not there anymore and i do not understand this one bit how a team with three superstars that have been, and I think Neymar was not as good, but especially Mbappé and Messi have been brilliant up until that point. How they then completely vanish from the game is beyond me. Loads of credit to Modric and Benzema, world-class players. And Modric, uh, the work rate that he put in uh, at his age, this is what a superstar should do. The way Bonsema handled, he actually, within 50 minutes, outdid all the great work that um, Mbappé had done over the um, previous game and a bit more than a half before. Uh, he showed that he was he's the better striker there, although I think for, if I look, look at the totality, Mbappé did what he, he could do. But the one thing that really annoys me out of there, and I know... To me, this is a game that PSG lost or not a, a game that Madrid won in many ways. Because you cannot just disappear like that. Especially the way that suddenly you did not see Messi anymore. That suddenly you did not see Mbappé any, any, anymore. That none of... I mean, Verratti, all the who had dominated midfield, suddenly he was not there anymore. There was no no location. The Marquinhos, the one who actually should keep a level head for PSG... Uh, made mistakes left and right it was i mean it could have been four or five then at the end this to me was a bigger capitulation than uh, the famous remontada uh, uh in barcelona because uh yeah at that point you would say that barcelona probably was considered a better team than psg and i also think um yeah the referees were kind of nice uh, to Barcelona on that day as well. But what was happening yesterday, boy, was this an uh, absolute disgrace. An absolute disgrace. And yeah, I don't want to say now this is over and Mbappé will go to Real Madrid, blah, 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 because, you know, this is not how things, hopefully this is not how things go. But I have to say this was definitely, uh, I, I was standing there with open eyes. I was watching. I could not believe what I was seeing. This was unfathomable to me that a team that had a game for 60 minutes completely under control 
dominated the proceedings that won mistakes by Dollaroma. I need to call him this way. Won mistake by Dollaroma completely turned the game on its head. You cannot lose. This is where then your leaders, and I'm looking at Marquinhos, I'm looking at Verratti, I'm looking at Messi, and I'm looking also at Mbappé. This is where you need to step up, get everything together. And this tells me that this is not a team. It's not a surprise to any anyone. But a true team doesn't fall apart like this. It is staggering. I mean, yes, there are momentum swings. But this was one of those that unbelievable. In any case, uh, it was great. I mean, it again shows the action. Uh, in the Champions League is great. I actually thought that uh, Real Madrid was definitely also helped that away goals didn't count anymore because that away goal by Mbappé would have not given them as much drive. Although, you know, 3-1, it would have been possible as well. But I have a gut feeling because or, or, or with 2-1, it was level. It was not that they that were behind. But in any case, be it as it may. I will think actually that next week we might get even more entertainment. Not as great... As I said, not that great teams in there, but then Ajax Benfica, looking very much forward to it, as to United Atletico Madrid. And then on Wednesday, we get Juve against Villarreal and Lille against Chelsea. Um, I think Juve Villarreal will be a really, really tough one. So, yeah, I would love to hear what you what you thought about uh, the games, especially the D game. Please drop a line below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!